Have you ever heard the radio show Lake Wobegon with Garrison Keeler? It has some wonderful stories about this mythical place. There is a story that he told one time about Mr. Bowser, who worked in the town, and everybody knew him, but he hated his old Chevy. But he still had to drive it because it would not break down. It was still running, so he had to hang on to it. It was all rusted all over the place. It was rusted out on the sides, and the floorboard was all rusted out. Mr. Bowser had a, a piece of three-quarter inch plywood on the floor so that he would have somewhere to place his feet. His Chevy's old name was Henry, after his late father. His father taught him that you should never throw anything away, especially if it's still working. Well, he couldn't get rid of it because after 15 years, even on the coldest mornings of all, all he'd have to do is point at the ignition and it would start. He drove that thing around. He hated it for 10 of the 15 years that he owned it. See, the heater didn't work anymore. The heater didn't work, and it was freezing outside. But Mr. Bowser was brought up to endure suffering and be cheerful. So he drove it around, and he drove it as cheerfully as he could, this horrible car, even though it depressed the life out of him. He hung on to it until a year ago last January. He was sitting in the Chatterbox Cafe when someone said, Well, that old Chevy of yours, it sure is amazing. It's quite a starter, isn't it? What do you ever do with that thing? Well, the truth is, he never did anything. Lack of maintenance seemed to encourage Henry, the car. It thrived on neglect. He had not changed the oil in over five years, but the car, it didn't seem to notice. They said, Lordy, we have never seen anything like it. We have never had that kind of luck with a Chevy like you have. And in that moment, something seemed to snap inside of Mr. Bowser. He drove that car out to the hill by the Habersons' farm. He stopped, put it in neutral, got out, gave it a push, and ended its life near the second telephone pole that it ran into. He put the car out of its misery. It was a happy man who walked the nearly two miles back to town. Now, he has a new Chevrolet called Betty. It doesn't start all the time. He's had problems with it, but when it does start, the heater works perfectly. And better than that, it still has that new car smell. It smells fresh. You get a fresh feeling when you sit in Betty, and that's all he wanted. You know, it is kind of a Christian feeling. A fresh start. A fresh hope for the world and for your world. A fresh inspiration of wonder and joy. A spark to touch us and to start us. How many times have we held on to things that we no longer wanted because we were told that we had to? We do. Many times. Many of us are walking into tomorrow all hunched over, carrying the weight of the baggage of the past that we have carried many, many years. And we absolutely detest this baggage, and yet we think that it's our responsibility to carry it. And we stand proudly at the doorway like we would the doorway of a Holiday Inn, waiting to check in to our future. But the problems that we have carried in all of our old junk, they're with us. All the things that we have disliked, our habits, our terrible afflictions that we have afflicted on ourselves. 
And we have lost the ability because we have forgotten how to unpry our fingers from the suitcase of the past. And so we carry it along with us. All the time, it's getting heavier and heavier. And pretty soon, we can no longer pick it up. We just drag it along behind us. Wherever we go, we drag that burden with us. And we carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. What a burden the past is. And God says to us, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. But we don't hear that. We've gone through too many empty yesterdays, still carrying all of our stuff, and all the time it gets heavier and weightier on our shoulders and our back. Dennis Wheatley says we should do this. Number one, we should focus on where we want to go rather than where we're coming from. We focus more on where we've been than where we're going many times. We focus on the mistakes that we've made in the past, the failures we've had, and we think that it binds us. It limits us. It keeps us in a cage. And we hold the keys to the cage, but we stay in the cage anyway. Number two. Learn from your mistakes as well as your successes. You can use your mistakes to transcend them. What you are today is to find out how to transcend your own biography. We all have a biography. It's in our mind, and we've written it from day one. The minute that we came out of our mama's womb, we decided who and what we are, and then we hold these opinions tightly. Now, possibly, it's time to rewrite our own biography. It may be time to write a new chapter or even close the old book and begin a brand new book. There was a man who was very, very distressed and he said, do you think it's possible for a human being to do a redo? These were his exact words. Do you think it's possible for a human being to do a redo? He said, I don't think I can at this point. I've been carrying my baggage of the past too long. I don't even know why I'm alive because I've made so many mistakes and he was telling about all the mistakes that he had made. That's what you do. When you carry your baggage of the past, you continually unpack it, look at it, examine it, and then repack it again. He said, I don't think I can change again. But perhaps with God's help, I could do a redo. Well, that is the whole message of Christianity, my friend. You get a redo. You get a start over. I remember back in 1974, I wanted a car. I've always been a car person. Well, I really wanted this car. I had a great desire for it, and I gave up a lot of things that I could have had in life just to buy this car. And I didn't have the car that long, but uh, I had the car. I saw this 1974 car the other day, the exact car that I wanted so bad. And that car, like Henry, the old Chevy, had big rust holes in it. And I thought when I saw this, how could I have invested so much energy and so much time desiring that car? There's one thing about a car. You don't get a redo. Once it starts to rust, it just keeps on rusting. You can patch it, and the new rust hole 
somewhere else will emerge in time. That's what past material objects do. They decay, like Mr. Bowser's old Chevy Henry. But a human being is always going through a redo phase. Every cell is constantly being replaced and made new by God. There is a regeneration that's happening in your physical body and your mind right now. The only thing that we are carrying that is old in us may be the opinion of who we think we are, what we think we can do, how far we think we can succeed or not, we carry with us in our baggage all those opinions. We carry the baggage of the past and we're constantly finding baggage and, and as we find it, we're surprised, aren't we? Why, this is bad, we say, and then we repack it again. Well, today, as you listen to this, if you open up your baggage of the past and unpack it, leave it unpacked, leave it there. Unpacking useless baggage in the mind continues daily. It is a going beyond yourself. Not to expect the worst in the future, but to expect the best and to know that God is really with you. And you can expect the best with God. You unpack to stay unpacked. You have the right to expect the best in 2014. You are not your biography. You're writing a brand new book right now as a child of God. But as you begin this, that old voice comes back and it says to you yes 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 but remember what you have done in the past and how you haven't lived up in the past to being a child of God yeah that'll happen but remember today is a brand new day that has never been lived before and it's a brand new time a brand new year you can transcend your own biography of who you have been. It's redo time. I was listening to a minister of a television church the other day, and he was telling a story to some Sunday school children. Let me tell you the story. The devil, he mused, had an auction, and he was auctioning off all of his tools. The people were looking around at all the tools, and they came to one tool, and that said, not for sale. And the devil smiled and said, I can't sell you that tool because that is the one that I cannot be without. And the people were fascinated by this. They wanted to know what that one tool was, and they looked on the back of it and saw the label for that tool. You know what it was? The tool for discouragement. You see, that is the one tool that once it is inside of us, it's hard to overcome. It's hard for us to remember God. It's hard for us to do what we want to do because we get discouraged. And we think that we just aren't what we need to be, never will be. Well, I have another tool that will really help us when we're thinking down thoughts about ourselves. Remember who is talking to you when you're putting yourself down. It's not God. It is your lower mind giving you lower messages. And it is the time right now entering this new opportunity to give yourself a new message. God will never tell you what you can't do 
what you can't become. God always whispers in your ear and tells you what you can do and accomplish. God is the great giver of ideas, not generic ideas, but ideas for you on how you can use your life in the highest and best way. God is all good, endless good inside of you, and God is all love. You will never hear a negative word from God. You'll never hear or think a negative thought generated from God. So when you pray, if you're beginning to get some negative messages, that's the lower human part of you that should be quiet and should be told to keep quiet. Listen instead to the all-positive voice of God. Sometimes when we carry our baggage of the past into tomorrow, we carry it for a reason. Many people prefer known hells to unknown heavens. Let me tell you a true story. There was a man some years ago who was a prisoner of war. It was decided to do a psychological study on him, so he was offered two different options. The first option is that he could have a firing squad. They took him to the room and showed him where all the men with the rifles would be and where they'd stand and where he would stand against the wall. They told him about the command and the bullets that would eventually destroy his body. The second option was a closed door. They told him he could walk through that door and he asked them what was through the door and the leader said unknown hells the man then chose the firing squad and you know through the door it would have been automatic freedom it's a true story it is true of the gentleman whose story is told. But it's also true in our own lives. Many times we will choose something that we already know because we know it. Even if it's not working for us, we'll choose that known hell over something that is unknown. And we need to get braver. How do you do that? You do that with God's strength and God's help coming through you. You say, dear God, I'm going in a new direction, and with your help, I will not be frightened. I'm going into something that I have never done before, but I'm going to walk with you, God. And God, I know that you're walking before me, and you know that you're going to help me every step of the way. And I pray that I know it too. Every day, we have to go beyond where we have been the day before. And the only way to achieve that is to walk with God. The only way to become better than our former self is to walk with God. But we have to work with God by being willing to unpack and not constantly go through our own trash and relive the bad experiences. We have to be better than our former self and we have to do it one step, one day at a time. There's a wonderful story that a minister told of his dream. In it, he had a sledgehammer, and every day he cracked against a huge granite monument. Well, finally he gave up. He said, God, I can't do this anymore. I'm not making any difference. And then he heard a voice that said, hit it one more time. And with the next blow, the rock actually cracked 
in half, splitting into two sections. Well, that is the way that life is many times. Yes, we've had many failures, but we have to keep on keeping on. The only time we get discouraged is when we think that we're doing it all alone and we're not making any difference, and we think that we can't go on any further. We don't know how we can overcome the great problems that are facing us. It is in that moment, my friend, that we need to hold on to the hand of God and say, Dear God, I can't do this alone. I am walking with you now. Take me the one extra step. And after that step, we ask God to take us on another step. And that way, we go on. And as we move, we get our confidence back. We get our energy back. We find that the past and the baggage of the past is no longer on our back. And we find that the movement's easy. And it's a happy movement. We have the strength not only to endure, but to transform our lives. You have that God-given strength inside of you. There is not one person listening to this right now that does not have the connectedness directly with God. And whether you believe it or not, you have it. Every once in a while, every person, including me, we need a pep talk to remind us of the power and the strength of God. Let me tell you, within the lower human mind, we have a prison that imprisons us. It forgets about the great unlocker of the door, the great power and the strength of God that will flow through at any moment. And it doesn't matter where you hear that pep talk. Often God will send people to you like me that will give you a pep talk or God will do it to you directly. In 1924, Newt Rockney had laryngitis, and it was so bad that he couldn't speak a word, and yet he had to give a pep talk to his players. So he decided that he would take his team to a room that was next to the room where the opposing team was, and the coach of that team was one of the best talkers in the world. He told his players that he couldn't talk, but he told them to listen to the other coach's message because it was true for them too. And after this, they went on inspired and they won the game. Well, I invite you to listen to many ministers of many religions because the pep talk is the same. We have the same God, which is like the hub of the wheel. And then the different spokes are the different churches and religions that go out from that. Perhaps sometimes you need to change words to make it vital and alive for you. We always give ministers permission to do that on our positive written sermons so that they can communicate effectively with their own congregations. But the truth is the same about an all-present good God that is available right where you are. A God that will make you inspired and fill you with energy. A God that will make your moments so very special right now and will make tomorrow better than you can now believe in your human mind. Often we say that with the problems we're experiencing, we're not sure if life is, is worth it. Maybe we should just sit on the sofa and wait this one out. <laughs> we wish that we could go back to the good old days, what we imagined them to be. 
we feel that the weight of our problems is so great and the weight of future problems that we imagine is so great and we don't know if we're ever going to have the power and the energy, the motivation to overcome them. Well, in your present human mind, you can't. It takes a greater mind than yours to overcome these problems. That's one of the reasons I believe that we have problems. Problems are opportunities for us to expand our limited human thinking to the limitless mind of God. God is bigger than any of your problems. No matter what you're facing, God is bigger. God can figure out a way when your human mind says there's no way. God can work out a solution too, but you have to do your part in your free will. You have to consent and allow the mind of God to work through your mind. And then you have to go out and move and work as God directs. Thomas Edison once said, Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Well, truly it is. You go to God first. And then you work and work and work as God directs, holding the hand of God, you can overcome anything. Edgar Allan Poe once said, Those who dream by day are aware of the many things that escape those who only dream at night. Well, become a daydreamer. And become a daydreamer with something that I'm going to teach on our next spiritual retreat cruise coming up in a couple weeks. Spiritualized imagination. You don't become a daydreamer just in limited human mind. You become a daydreamer who realizes there is no lack but a lack of faith in God. There's no sickness in the soul but a sense of separation from God. You become the kind of dreamer who knows that you can go beyond where you have been and where you think you're going and become great for humanity and therefore great for yourself. Some people die at age 21, but they are not buried until they're 91. Don't you be that way. Have a past thinking funeral in your life. Bury the words like I can't and the other word but. The word but usually has a chain attached to it and this chain is attached to what? Your past, your baggage. With God, my friend, you can do things beyond what you believe you can right now. Now you know that I believe in you. And you can go beyond even your best yesterdays. With God, you can have the greatest gift of all, and that is a fresh start. I pray that you today, as you're watching this, you give yourself the chance that God has already given you and wants you to accept a fresh start for the best tomorrows of your life.